okay. I don't know what the ones and twos stand for, but okay. <laughs> um. Okay, well, let's start. Um. Oh, okay, fine. Thank you. <laughs> um. Well, my parents were divorced when I was two, and um, I've not seen my dad in the past seven years or so. Um, but later on, my mum got a partner, um, maybe when I was six or something, and he was Muslim. Um, we really didn't get along at all, um, probably because of the fact that he beat me a lot, <laughs> and he would scream at me, and, you know, he went about my weight. <laughs> um, he would tell me I was going to hell. There's more, but that's the that's the gist of it. Um, I was six. I grew up with this treatment until I was thirteen or so. Um, when I was thirteen, he finally hit my mother. You know, she just turned a blind eye for for most of these years. <laughs> um, she she just let him get on with it whenever he had his thing with me. Um. She ended up in hospital. I was the one who had to clean up the blood. Um, and when when it went to court, he was found not guilty because of insignificant amount of evidence. Um, needless to say, I I judged all of Islam on this one person. Now now that I I know Islam, I know that he was a hypocrite. <laughs> he he would preach things and go against them. He would twist it. There's many people who do that, um, and yeah, I I hated Islam. I hated Muslims. Um, I was growing up um, in a Catholic school. We studied Bible in class. We went to church. We sang hymns. You know, all that good stuff. <laughs> in fact, we sang pretty much about everything. <laughs> um, and. Thanks to my mum's partner, I was confused about religion from such a young age. I was confused pretty much about everything. Am I a good person? Am I a bad person? Am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? Even if I, even, even if I hung the washing up the wrong way, I got beat for that. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> I, I totally... Uh, I found myself faithless and confused. I totally rejected Islam because I saw it as everything evil in life. Um, <clears throat> I turned into um, a rather distasteful type of person, if you will, um, as I was growing up. Um, after the incident with my mother, um, you know, a goth, if you want to label it. <laughs> I, I went out with um, black lipstick everywhere and eyeliner down to my cheeks. I remember um, once I was walking in Glasgow with my mum and her um, her new boyfriend and somebody came up to me and um, asked how much how much for me <laughs> uh, they thought I was a prostitute <laughs> uh, yeah nice um, I, I began to cut my wrist I began thinking about suicide um, oh, no, <laughs> um, I was a goth, goth, if you want to put a label to it, you know, what, <laughs> oh, <laughs> gosh, um, I was walking in Glasgow, and, um, this one, uh, boy came up to, well, not me personally, went up to my mum's new boyfriend and said, how much for her, can I borrow her for two hours? He thought I was a prostitute. <laughs> nice. Um, anyway, um, after that, um, I began to cut my wrists. I began thinking about suicide a lot. I used to sit and think how I'm going to uh, end my life. Once I stood at the top of a bridge for over two hours and I, I contemplated about jumping in <laughs> the water. <laughs> Um, 
I used to sit alone, I like to cry, I felt something missing, um, I used to think about death, I used to think about what happens after, what will happen to me, um, I, I never lost my faith in, in God as such, just in religion, I always knew that it was God, I just didn't know how to go about worshipping him and eventually I just gave up and I did my own thing. <laughs> Um, I, I just didn't know what to believe about it so um, eventually I, I just prayed I, I didn't specify any religion I just closed my eyes and I prayed and I, I said I'm sorry if I'm not praying the correct way but I need you to help me please guide me to the right path um, and then I just ended it there just very simple um, and so I began working from what I believed in personally um, I didn't find a religion and suddenly say oh let, let's do this, I like it <laughs> yeah, I, I worked from my heart <coughs> um, I, I found the Trinity rather confusing now that I was older and um, I rejected the idea that God had a son so um, I, I worked on the belief only one God, no son just God, almighty God, you know. Um, so eventually I found Islam. And imagine my shock that everything I hated was everything I was looking for. <laughs> so I continued my research. Um, I did have a few Muslim friends online, but um, the Muslims that I talked to, they weren't very religious, really. We never talked about religion at all. Um, but I, I became more aware of that and I became more aware that these people are nice people that not every Muslim can be labelled um, you know <laughs> a various amount of swearing words <laughs> um, so I, I did my research um, while I was still researching um, I think I was 14 so um, during my research, I I began to wear the hijab outside of school um, just to get the feel of it because by this time I was fairly certain that Islam was the, the thing that I'd eventually follow for the rest of my life. So I, I was still researching and I actually looked up a great many hate videos and I used to challenge myself to find something to go against what they were saying in the favour of Islam and I always did because I found that most of the things that people said were either ignorant or uneducated really um, so as I said outside of school I wore a hijab um, then yeah in the summer, the following summer, we had a family reunion and needless to say my family weren't exactly very happy that I was considering taking up Islam as my faith um, although my family isn't all that religious they saw it as a betrayal of some sort because of my mum's ex-partner um, and they labelled all Muslims as, um, well, all Muslim men as, you know, oppressive and um, woman beaters and um, liars and cheats and stuff. And of course that's all wrong. Um, I remember once I was trying on a niqab in my living room, my mum walked in she called me Iraqi <laughs> and a suicide bomber um, my, I got my first ever insult from my grandfather which was very upsetting it wasn't anything all that harsh but he'd never spoken an ill word to me since I was born he called me a stupid little girl my grandma um, constantly refers to my headgear how it makes me um, look fat, how I'm a pretty girl and how this, this makes me look ugly 
you know, working on my um, self-consciousness here. <laughs> um, even last week, my mum tried to kick me out of the house and she said, you belong with Packies. <laughs> Mind my <laughs> sign, really, but that, that's what she said to me and I yelled at her to stop being racist, etc, etc. But anyway, um, the day came when m one of my uncles came up to me and, um, oh I'm 16, um, I, I was 15 in the family reunion, um, I started wearing hijab when I was 14 but only outside of school, 14, yeah, um, anyway, <laughs> um, he he really started getting really angry at me. He he he'd been making bacon and um, alcohol jokes for the last few weeks, <laughs> but uh, my my mum had told me something along the lines of take off your job and then I started saying no, something to do with relig religion, and she she told me to do something against Islam, and then I rejected. Um, my mum walked away, my uncle came through, he, he began screaming at me, um, saying about something about paedophiles and um, suicide bombers, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but this is a man that I hadn't seen since I was about two years old, so it was very heartbreaking. <laughs> um, and I ran away. Um, I went into the woods <laughs> and I just sat there um, I, I watched as they tried to call me I watched as I got voicemail I just didn't respond to anything I didn't know what I was going to do I went out um, to the airport to take some of my cousins back home um, I went back into the house I packed a bag and then I had some and I left I wasn't into him going back. Well, I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I went to the mosque. Um, and eventually somebody helped me find the imam. And I had two other witnesses with me. And I said my shahada. Um, and... I can safely say that it's the best feeling that I've ever had. I, I felt s suddenly very... I felt like I had a reason for living. I felt like, um, you know, I had hope. It, it was the first time I had hope. Um, I, I felt like there's nothing to be afraid of um, anymore. Just what God can decide for me. and. When when you only have one thing to fear, it's um, it makes the world a better place. Really, <laughs> um, the first time that I learnt how to pray, um, it was one of the best feelings. Um, you know, putting your head on the floor. Um, I I still. I still get a special feeling from doing that. Anyway, I said my shahada on the 31st of July 2008. I was 15 years old. And now I'm 16. I guess I've been just over a year. Um, I've never looked back at it. And whenever you... Whenever I had a question about Islam, instead of letting it sort of keep going in, in your mind, um, I, I always question it. I question things that I don't understand. And I openly say to anybody, if you can prove to me that Islam is wrong, then I will leave Islam. Because I, I feel... I can say that because Islam is the truth and I'm so confident that it's the truth. If somebody ever found a flaw, then fine. 
I will gladly give up Islam if it's wrong. And yeah, when I when I took the shahada, it it was really a, a wow feeling. <laughs> it it's the it's the best thing that I've ever done. I mean, well, it, yeah, it's speechless, <laughs> you know. After I did it, I, I just, just something dawned on me. It was like, if I could paint a picture of it, it would all be sparkling lights and stuff. <laughs> After that, anyway, um, yeah, Islam doesn't have any flaws. That's that's why I can confidently say to everybody, you know, if you find a flaw, then I'll leave it, <laughs> because I, I I'll gladly give them that opportunity. They can say whatever they like, but I know that um, Islam has the answer to everything. Islam's the truth. Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah. It's the best choice I've ever made. Um, I I don't test myself really. It's just um, when I find something that I don't understand completely, I'll go and ask questions about it. Because I'm a very open-minded person. If I I will listen to everybody's opinion. Um, that's how I can I can have discussions effectively that way as well. Um, but I always, up till now, I've always found the truth in Islam, and inshallah, I will always find the truth in Islam. It's the only way of life. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. Um. Yeah, afterwards, uh, you know, I, I got grief from my family, but no matter what, Islam, you've got something to lean on if you've got a religion. If if you're upset, you can, you can finally, like, cry to someone. You, you've got something to believe in, you've got something to lean on. Sometimes I'll cry, and when I'm crying, I'll say Alhamdulillah, because for whatever happens, Allah knows the best, and eventually, somehow, whatever you're going through is going to put you in a better place. Um, there's always discrimination, but Allah also knows about that. And for every struggle that you go through for religion, um, I'm content with the the knowledge that Allah knows, and inshallah, I'd get reward for putting up with it for my religion. I I wear my hijab in school and out school. I will not leave my house without my hijab. If somebody comes into my house, I wear my hijab as well. I I think. God knows what's best for us. I know God knows what's best for us. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um so yeah. My friends. Oh. Oh yes, I met my Muslim friends online and then I met them up <laughs> in real life. Um I met my best friend last Ramadan. We went to the mosque together. <laughs> um, no, I don't see them every day. I, I go to the mosque on Fridays. Yeah, I go to the mosque. I go to my prayer. Um, and my friends, I lost all of my old friends, actually. Um, you know, if I didn't have any qualms about swearing, I would have repeated some of the things they said to me. <laughs> um, 
one of them even called me Pakistani. She told me to go back from where I came from, which is totally ridiculous. <laughs> I've never been to Pakistan in my life. I, I'm white, I've got blue eyes and red hair. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've got new friends, they're very tolerant, they're very accepting. And one that's one good thing actually about the hijab. All of the judgmental people, you can tell, you can tell them, you can tell who the judgmental people are, and then they'll they'll either make fun of me or they'll stay away from me. All of the accepting people, they're, they're fine to talk to me. They're like, "You're Muslim, it's okay, I respect that." So yeah, Subhanallah. Um, and yes. I made this. <coughs> if any of you want to go look at it, you know. <laughs> yes, any questions? <laughs> Oh my! Well, last I think either last week or the week before, uh, she tried to uh, kick me out. <laughs> she she told me that I I belong with Packies. That's her words, not mine. Um, uh, uh, my mother. That's what she said. Um. Anyway, my my family is still, you know, they're they're sort of accepting it, but, uh, well, I actually I live in Bolarno. It's a it's a small village. It's, well, not that small, but it's a village just outside Edinburgh. It's maybe twenty minutes to enter Edinburgh by bus. Um. Well, yeah, I've had people spitting at my feet, I've had people follow me, I've had people throw stones at me. In Edinburgh, I've had um, drunk men come up to me, I've had um, people yell Muslim scum at me, you know. For the sake of Allah, you know, I'll I'll do anything, and you know, <coughs> it would be so easy to take off my hijab and then nobody would know. But I'm I would never take off my hijab for for anything, nothing. I love my hijab; it's for the best. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> uh, me? Um, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> um, not that long. I don't come on Pal Talk very much. I just came for this room actually. <laughs> I like this room. <laughs> I, I think I've spent um, most of this time in this room. Oh, I was just browsing. I typed in Muslim to the search. <laughs> Nice to be with you guys. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Allah guides whom He wills. And I'm very happy that He guided me. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, mashallah, Islam is perfect.
no matter what anybody says and no matter what anybody tells you or does to you yeah I know that keeps me going <laughs> Yeah. I've had people come over to me and physically push me around <laughs> and swear at me. <laughs> There's some really horrible people. Yeah. And I'm happy to fit up with it though because I know that inshallah that when it comes down to it Allah can see my struggles, Allah can see how tolerant I am and um, inshallah I'll get reward for all of that so I'm happy to put up with it so am I done here? Yes, fire extinguisher. Yes, fire extinguisher. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. I'm sorry. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, thank you so much, Sister uh, Red Rose. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Preserve you, protect you, bless you, and keep you on the straight path. That was an amazing story, Wallahi. And you were very hesitant to take the mic and tell us. I was thinking that this 12 year old was going to take the mic and start rambling, you know, for nothing. But it turned out to be, mashallah, a wonderful, wonderful tale. And a great true story of how you uh, became Muslim, and subhanAllah, you sound like a like a very grown woman, you know, who have true and firm beliefs in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in her deen. Yeah, of course, it sounds very genuine, alhamdulillah. Uh, 